OK, so a young plant is very hot, but how long does it stay hot? If it only stays hot to you a few minutes, uh, we're not going to see any plants in that form. It has to stay hot for a fair while for us to have any realistic hope of seeing them while they're still hot. So let's imagine we've got something with the mass of Jupiter, and it's by the time it's settled down and formed, it's at a temperature of about 1,000 Kelvin. That's cooler than the 100,000 we calculated in the last video, but a lot of that heat would be dissipated during formation. So 1,000 might be a not totally unreasonable guess for how hot it is once it's actually settled down to look like a planet. Probably a bit of an underestimate, but anyway. How long is it going to take to cool down? Well, it's going to cool down by radiating. There's no other way it can get rid of energy, really. And we know the radiation is given by the Stefan Boltzmann equation, A sigma t to the fourth. So the power radiated, where A is the surface area, sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and t is the temperature. Now, once again, it's going to be a rather complicated system. If you look at temperature against time, to begin with, it's going to be very hot, 1,000 degrees. That means this is going to be very large. It's losing energy at a fast rate. So the temperature will start dropping rapidly. But as it gets cooler, T gets less. So the rate at which water goes away is decreases, and it'll slow down something like that. But let's just assume it, it cools down steadily at its initial rate and we can estimate how long it will take to get rid of the energy that we calculated it would have to begin with. So it had about uh, energy of about 10 to the 36 joules. How long will it take to get rid of that if it's, a, if it's at a temperature of 1000 Kelvin? So all we simply do is take this energy and divide it by A sigma t to the fourth. A is 4 pi r squared. Once again, we'll assume that our planet is Jupiter-like as a exemplar of a big planet. So we'll put in the radius of Jupiter here. Um, multiply by sigma and t to the fourth. And it turns out we get a time of about 3 by 10 to the 14 seconds. That's because the a sigma t to the fourth comes out as about 3 by 10 to the 21 watts. And divide this by that, you get about 3 by 10 to the 14, roughly speaking. Once again, a meaninglessly big number, but we can convert that into something that makes more sense like years. So divide by 60 to get from seconds to minutes, divide by another 60 to get to hours, divide by 24 to get to days, divide by 365 to get to years. And that comes out as about 10 million years. So this is telling us that planets will stay hot for several million years. I mean, we've made lots of approximations here, so, uh, and, um, like, assuming it started at a thousand, but it probably started hotter than that. But roughly speaking, we're talking tens of millions of years, much less than the four billion years our own sun is old. So that's telling us that most of the heat that was originally in Jupiter has gone but certainly not a few seconds, so quite long enough for us to have a reasonable chance of finding glowing planets if you look around stars that have only just formed.